Hello everyone, hope you're having an excellent day today. In this video, I'm gonna be showing off our amazing Lego studio. Steven and I have used this space for our Lego room for the past eight years now. This space has been featured a couple different times online, such as by Beyond the Brick, Atlanta Brick Co., and even our local Fox News station. But since all those videos have been published, we've implemented some amazing upgrades and improvements that have really changed the way this room operates. So let's dive in and check out the studio. One of the main purposes of the studio is to give us a space to build Lego creations. And in order to do that, we need some nice table space to work on. Our previous IKEA tables worked pretty good, but eventually the scale at which we started building started to uh, cause the tables to deteriorate and warp. So they were literally no longer functional. Back in 2019 and 2020, I built a giant castle, Storst Castle, you can go see some videos on my channel about it, and uh, it weighed several hundred pounds and ended up absolutely crushing the IKEA tables that we had beneath it, and we used those to build on, so we needed something new. So now we've upgraded with these very nice Husky tables that we got at Home Depot. They certainly weren't cheap, but they have a lot more strength, a lot more usability, a lot more features, which I can show you really quick here. One of the most useful things about these tables is this little knob you can turn and raise and lower the table. That makes it so easy to build at different heights and uh, have a more comfortable building position versus being hunched over all the time. A couple of these tables also have nice little drawers and these are great for storing tools, utensils, extra pieces, whatever you like in there. And so that's been a nice added feature as well. I think the real reason we ended up going for these big metal frame wooden tables is that they have a 300 pound weight limit per table. So that means we can stand on these tables and still hold a couple big dumbbells and still not be maxing them out or um, you know, warping or damaging them in any way. That way we can build as big as we want without damaging the furniture in our room. We've also got these tables with this uh, trim around the outside edge. And uh, we'll talk about these more in just a second because the next part we want to discuss is the bricks. Yeah, Steven and I have collected a lot of Lego pieces over the years and we needed a good place to store and access them on a regular basis. This problem was pretty easy to solve early on when we only had a couple bookcases and a few bins to put all of our Lego in. Now it encompasses pretty much the entire room one interesting fact about our Lego storage solution is that it's definitely not sorted to the same degree as many other mock builders. This is because we sort by color and sometimes size, but mostly just by the basic Lego colors. I have heard this technique described as barbaric by some, but hear me out. There are some pretty valid reasons for doing it this way. We've mentioned it before, but Steven and I like to build really large creations at an increasing rate, which is definitely not good for the amount of free time that we have, which isn't that much. So whatever free time we have, we wanna spend building and therefore not sorting. The nice thing about color sorting your brick is that you can be done with a couple bins worth of unsorted Lego in just a few hours. Now, the main critique I've heard about color sorting is not that it's easier to sort, but that it takes longer to find the pieces. And that is definitely true, but there are ways you can mitigate that weakness. We mentioned these tables earlier on and this is one of the main reasons we have these tables with these edges is because when you have bins of color sorted brick and you're looking for a specific piece within that mix of uh, a singular sorted color, something like a pick a brick cup or a shoebox size bin is not gonna give you that much surface area to look at and dig through when you're trying to find those pieces. However, a bigger bin gives you a large area to observe and inspect and reach into and find a lot more pieces more quickly. The larger the surface area, the quicker the build process for a color sorted collection. And with that in mind, an entire table gives you a huge amount of surface area. So if you dump a couple bins worth of color sorted brick into a table, you can see literally thousands and thousands of pieces at a glance and be able to access those pieces pretty rapidly. The one downside to having a table like this would be cleaning it up, but if you have a dustpan sands the dust, you can scoop the Lego back up and put it back in the bin very rapidly as well, making a fairly efficient form of building. The added benefit of doing color sorting versus sorting by type is that you can see pieces that you might not have even imagined for a particular need 
right at your fingertips. So NPU and innovation is a lot easier to do than just dreaming it all up in your head. And when building, I like to use unusual and bizarre pieces in my creations. I think it's uh, one of the more unique aspects of mock building. Aside from a strong case for the color sorting theory, we have one more main purpose of the LEGO Studio we can talk about. The various LEGO sets that Steven and I have collected over the years. As Steven and I get older, we collect more and more LEGO sets. We get more and more nostalgic. We want to kind of capture those youthful moments of sets that we had or always wanted to have and never could. And that's why we have a lot of sets starting to pile up. We have added more shelves and some larger IKEA display cases in order to properly showcase our creations and avoid as much dust as possible. These do a great job compared to our old cases, which we gave to our friend Joe. Some of our favorite themes include castles, space, adventurers, exoforce, bionicle, and galador. The list goes on. Lots of miscellaneous sets here. And as happy as we are with our display solutions we have so far, we have added a lot more room for our bulk brick, which means we have a lot less space to display sets. And as we acquire more and more, this creates a bit of a storage problem. Things like Adventurers, Exoforce, and some of our other unbuilt sets are starting to get pushed to the edge of the room or even put in the closet. And it looks like we're going to have to pare down and maybe sort down a few of the sets that we don't uh, find as essential. But that's a problem we can easily postpone to another day, and we're pretty happy with the aesthetic result so far. The last thing you might notice in the room are a couple chairs, couches, and a mini fridge and TV. These add a little edge of comfort to the otherwise purely utilitarian room. In fact, we often use this space to host parties, movie nights, and other events. One final thing I want to mention is the way we've deliberately chosen to light our LEGO studio. Unlike some rooms which tend to be a little bit washed out, we've gone for dozens of small accent lights. This creates, I think, a more warm and inviting atmosphere to build in. A few LEGO posters and LEGO art pieces adorn the walls. There's still a lot to be done in that regard. I've been a little bit slow to get frames for some of the other items we want to use. And that being said, this room is still very much a work in progress. There's more shelving, more elements to be added, a few things to be improved, as always. But I figured this room was nice enough to show off to everyone and give everyone a glimpse of our cool LEGO space. I certainly hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you like this kind of content, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It certainly helps the algorithm and helps this video reach more people. We'll be back with more Rock Raiders very soon. Take care, everyone. Have a great day.